Hello everyone. This is a recording of Social Work 207 uh, Blackboard Refresher. This is where I'm going to point out or uh, attempt to show you where everything is located so that you can get an understanding about where to find things within the course. For some of you who's taking Blackboard for the first time, uh, this would be beneficial. If you had it before, sometimes uh, some of the course material gets switched around in Blackboard. So I usually do a recording for all online courses to give you an idea of where things are in Blackboard and where you can locate things within Blackboard. So <clears throat> let me cover everything that's in Blackboard on this particular course that will help you uh, maneuver your way around Blackboard. So I'm going to start first with the Getting Started page, and this is the page uh, we're on right now. And you'll see where you have the syllabus located in the Getting Started page. It's also a link to the syllabus in this course also, but I recommend you use the link to the Getting Started page, which I have updated the syllabi. Below that, you'll find that this is my contact information with my office number and my cell number. I recommend to all students that you call me on my cell uh, so that you can get a speedy response. Uh, so the cell number is 843-345-2224. Below that is my welcome letter, welcoming you to the course in this journey. Uh, for some of you uh, who are interested in working with the elderly population, this may be a beneficial to you. For some of you uh, that still undecided, it may help you decide on what you want to do. Below that, I have a, a sample of a discussion post. I recommend that you spend a lot of time reviewing this section because your, your grade within Blackboard is going to be heavily dependent upon that. So up top, you can see where this is a, a sample discussion. And below that, you can see that this is an initial uh, post to the discussion. And you can see this individual started out immediately with the reference. In other words, this individual said, according to NASW Code of Ethics 1996, it's it is not ethical for a counselor uh, to begin dating Karen. In other words, that's a violation of Section 1.09 sexual relationships under the code of ethics. Okay, this person went one step further. And then they looked at Reamer in 2011 on page uh, 47, in which Reamer says, former clients may still uh, view social worker as an authority figure. So in other words, Reamer is basically saying this is another reason why you shouldn't date your client. Okay, and so they give a little bit more uh, explanation. So this is what I mean when I'm talking about support your your discussion posts. Okay? And I'm going to put another example under this for you so you can see how your papers, uh, your discussion posts and Blackboard, I mean in the discussion section, should be laid out. Okay? So you have to respond to two learners in this uh, discussion post. So you can see it started out immediately with hi, and then it's the name of the person you're responding to. And you can see that this person said, I agree with your response that this is unethical. Okay. And so why is it unethical? This person went one step further and said it's also a violation of six of section 1.06, conflict of interest under the Code of Ethics 1996. So this person tell me that they agree with the, the initial uh, post of the individual and then they also came back and said here's why I agree with it with supporting it with documentation okay as we look at uh, the second pair response hi and the person name you responding to says I agree but sometimes uh, it can be confusing so it says the, comp the court of ethics uh, does say one thing but the SC Code of Ethics, which is the South Carolina Code, uh, is not as strict. That is, uh, you have to wait three years after a relationship ends. Now, the thing about states, states' ethical codes are 
dealing with state uh, only. And another state, it might say something completely different. But when you look at the NASW Code of Ethics, that's for all social workers, no matter what state you're in. And so that's why you'll find that it's more in depth in what you can or what you shouldn't do. Okay, if I had to follow this as a social worker, I would much want to stay in line with uh, the Code of Ethics rather than the South Carolina Code. Uh, because, you know, in the Code of Ethics, if something go wrong while you're working with a client, you can be held accountable. Okay, the rubrics for the discussion post is laid out here. Okay, so what in this section, what I did is give you some examples of uh, completed BISAC social assessments. Bear in mind, they're not 100 papers, but they are passing grade papers. And so what you want to do is spend some time reviewing that. Uh, so you have a sample bisex social assessment on Ms. Davidson, and then you have another paper with a bisex social assessment. Now it's up to you to to look at uh, what you need to respond to and according to the syllabus. I also give you a social history and assessment form to look at to kind of help you, and then I give you some uh, helpful videos to watch that will help you with this. You definitely want to pay attention to Chapter 5 video because it kind of lays out what, what an assessment kind of looks like. In addition to that, you definitely want to view the Bisac Social Assessment PowerPoint I gave you because it kind of gives you an idea of how to ask the question to obtain the information that you need. So I would definitely recommend that you look at the Bisac Social uh, PowerPoint that I provided to kind of help you with this process. Okay, the outline for your paper is as follows. Identifying information about the client, the reason for the referral slash uh, presenting problem, the client's family description and functioning. Uh, so who all are in the family? And then when you look at re uh, relevant history, uh, strength and challenges, balance between independence and dependence, physical health, competencies, and daily living. Uh, so it's a list of things that you need to ascertain uh, information to assist you with your paper. Uh, as I said in the syllabus, by week two, each of you should already have a person that you want to interview. Below that, I have an APA format, which I provided you with some a APA writing tips. I also provided you with two templates for APA. I give you a quick reference guide that you can follow and I give you the library resources. Below that, if you click on the link, you'll see that you have the code of ethics that's laid out according to NASW. And then I give you a Purdue OWL. It's a good source to look at in helping you with citing and referencing for APA. And then I provided you with your core competencies. Uh, in which we talked about in the syllabus that you should be reviewing for each chapter. So there should be a link to CSWE that leads to the core competencies. Below that you have your college uh, online uh, course policies and then of course uh, you have some information about the coordinator for the course who develop it, proctorial information for students, uh, so there's a list of things on the Getting Started page. I recommend that you look at, look at everything that I have on the Getting Started page to assist, you, to assist you with this course. Below that, you have a link to the syllabi, but the link to this syllabi does not have the course schedule. So you definitely want to use the link that I have on the Getting Started page. So let's take a look at projects and paper. This is the information that's going to help you with your paper and it tells you everything that you have to comply with to answer your paper. Also in this link you have a PowerPoint presentation that you have to address and it talks about all of those things that you have to do a slide on. So you have to have a slide on strengths and challenges, a slide on balancing independent and dependent, physical health, competency and activities and daily living. So you should have a slide on each one of those in which you talked about each one of those. Uh, bear in mind, uh, I, I point out again that you need to review the Bisac Social Spirituality Assessment on the Getting Started page. 
because it helps you to formulate how to ask your questions so you can benefit from that. Now your syllabi will give you the dates when these assignments are due in the Blackboard. So you need to go back to your syllabus and, and you know just make sure you write down those dates. Okay, now you may not be able to see these things right now. Uh, well, matter of fact, the Bicycle Social, you can see on the 8th. No, I take that back. You can see both of them as of uh, the 8th at 1159. So by tomorrow, you should be able to see both of these assignments in Blackboard. Now, they're not due yet, so you need to go to your syllabus and see when the due dates are. Okay. Uh, the next section I clicked on was the discussion section. And so you have eight discussions you need to respond to. The only one you should be seeing right now is the one that starts on tomorrow. Uh, so your discussions for each week will start on a Monday. So this is started on Sunday and it'll open up to you on Monday. Uh, so you should see this assignment and you need to respond to this assignment. Uh, your initial uh, response should be on Thursday at no later than Thursday at 11:59, and you should respond it to your peers uh, by Sunday at 11:59, and also on Sunday at 11:59, week two discussion will open up. So every Sunday you will have a discussion open up for the following week. Uh, what I usually do also is send out an announcement on what's to do in the next discussion. So just to remind you that, okay, we're no longer on week one, so you won't have access to week one anymore after 11.59 on next Sunday. Uh, but you will see week two the following, and week three the following Sunday, and week four the following Sunday, and so on. So you have eight discussions that you have to post, uh, discussion to and respond to two learners. And that's located under discussion, so you'll click on discussion to do that. Uh, the next section is tests and quizzes. Uh, this is where you have your practice quiz. You can take it if you choose. If you took it before, you don't have to worry about it. But you have your midterm exam, which is uh, proctored. And you have 33 questions in that. So they consist of true and false, fill in the blank, short answers, and I did leave room where some credit was extra for certain questions uh, to kind of help you with that. And then you have your final exam. So you'll see the date when it's going to open up to you. And the due date uh, is on the syllabus when you have to take your final exam or your midterm exam. So that's list located under te tests and quizzes. What I always tell students under course outline that you want to click on unit one. When you click on unit one, it's going to tell you everything that's due in unit one. So you have a review of all your assignments. You have your unit one assignment. You have the, the link to the video that you're going to be watching. And then you have your discussion board. So all you have to do is click on the links and it'll, it'll take you to where you need to go. If you have any questions about any of these, then contact me and I should be able to to assist you with that so I just clicked on one of the links and it took you right to a video so just be mindful that these are all assignments that you have to review through the process okay uh, so all you would do is click on the link and it'll take you right to where you want and then you have a discussion so as we look at unit 2 which is week 2 you click on that, it'll tell you everything you need to do up in Unit 2, and it'll tell you about the discussions. Now, you can't post your discussion here, okay? But then you have a Unit 2 assignment, and it tells you what you need to do there. So when you click on Unit 2 assignment, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, this is where you're going to input your Unit 2 assignment. So you're going to do it in Word document, and then upload it under Unit 2. So just be mindful, uh, when you're answering these questions, you need to answer it under each one, not just one big jumbo uh, bunch of statements that you give me. So the first one should be number one, okay, what is an example of the way that you could potentially apply 
the role theory, okay, in the actual situation with the older client. So you're going to tell me that under that question. Then you're going to give me question two. Give an example of a question that you uh, would ask an older client in an interview that would be based upon social constructionism theory. Okay, so you have to have an understanding of those theories to un understand the questions that they're asking you. Okay, so you're going to submit these three questions response under uh, unit two. So if you fail to give me the question and just give me an answer, what you're going to find is you're going to lose points. So I recommend that you give me the question and then the answer under that question and then go on to the next rather than just give me one document and tell me, well, it's in there somewhere. You find it because I won't be looking for it. I'll be looking for the question. I'll be looking at the response and I'm not going to guess where it should be. You need to tell me that. Okay, as you go to unit three, it's going to list the, all the things you need to do in unit three and it's going to also give you a discussion. If a link does not open up to you, I recommend that you copy it and paste it in a different browser because sometimes your system blocks uh, the upload of links. Unit 4 is going to list everything that you need to do and you can see what's required of you in Unit 4. Uh, now again, the syllabus tell you when your midterm is due, so you need to be looking for that also. Okay, because it's right here, it just say midterm information and what it covers. But it doesn't say you can load it in this section, so you have to go to tests and quizzes to find the midterm. So Unit 5, it follows with the same thing. You have links, and it tells you that uh, this quiz covers, so you're going to do a drug and, and, and neglect of older adult quiz. So you're going to have to read pages 234 through 246. To respond in chapter nine to respond to this link, it's a graded, it's a graded quiz. So you have to take this. It has nothing to do with your midterm, or your final. This is a graded section altogether. So when you click on it, it's going to take you right there to, to begin this quiz. Okay, uh, so make sure you do that as we go forward. Okay, I lost my Blackboard page. So bear with me as I go back to Blackboard and find what I need to find in Blackboard. So here again, just remember all discussions I do, uh, your initial post is due on Thursday, and your response to your peers are due on Sunday, no later than Sunday. When one uh, unit closes, the other unit will open back up for the next section, so you will have that also that you need to respond to. Uh, I will be sending out announcements from time to time for you to actually uh, complete assignment, also to remind you of assignments that you would be doing, uh, you would be responding to. So I just want you to be mindful of those things, okay? Uh, let's see, as we go on, let me open this back up because I'm back in Blackboard. So all the units list everything that you need to do. So just follow your units and it'll give you that. Your calendar will also give you some of those same things if you click on calendar here. Now announcement, I post announcements each week. I, I even post announcement let you know that I've graded everything in uh, whatever uh, week we're in. Uh, for those people who fail to complete the assignment, do not, I repeat, do not email me your assignment. Your assignment needs to be submitted in a timely manner into Blackboard. I will not uh, respond to any email assignments, especially as a result because you missed the assignment. Now, if you feel there were legitimate reasons why you missed the assignment, then I recommend that you call me and we can talk about it. And I'll let you know whether I'm going to let you resubmit it or not. So just don't go ahead and email me your assignment because I will not accept email assignments uh, to my email address. That's just an indication that you failed to respond to assignment and that you were late with the assignment. So you will find that when that week close, you will already have a grade in there. So if there's no assignment, then your grade is zero. 
Uh, so don't email me assignment saying you couldn't finish it at 11.59 because your initial post should be done on Thursday and you should be responding to two peers no later than Sunday. Or if you miss your midterm or final, I just came off a term where I had people miss their midterm and they paid a cost for that uh, because I would not allow them to retake it. It's not fair to people who are uh, students who have already submitted assignment in a timely manner who may have received a lower grade uh, and may allow you to get a, a second stab at it, more time to study for it. It's not fair to them. So here again, I'm telling you, do not email me your assignment. All assignments need to be posted in Blackboard under the portal in a timely manner. If you, if you feel that you missed that assignment, then honor up to accepting the credit uh, for missing that assignment. Now, here again, if you have a legitimate reason where there was emergency in the family and it precluded you from doing certain things, then you need to talk to me about it. Do not just say, well, I'll email it and see if he's going to accept it. I'm telling you now, I will not accept email assignments uh, to me. Okay, so as we go forward, uh, we talked about announcements, we talked about calendar. The messenger is uh, available and you see I already have one message already there uh, where a student wants to uh, look at some importance. I, I'll, I'll respond to this person later on uh, after I finish this recording, but you can see I already have a message in there. Uh, as we go forth, my grade, if you look at it, it'll give you a list of everything. Uh, you'll see this abuse is due on the 23rd. Uh, this assignment should be posted on Thursday and responding to your peers no later than Sunday. So you can see that it also tells you when things are due. Uh, discussion assignments, it just give you enough uh, an idea. Now, your presentation uh, this talks about a rough draft. You do not have to submit a rough draft of your paper to me. Just remember that. Uh, here again, it talks about practice quiz. You will not receive credit for practice quiz. Uh, if you take it, that's fine, okay? Uh, but then I would say go ahead and take it, and, and we'll see. But, I, you know, everything I have, you'll see where it is, 100, 100, 100. Those are things that I'm going to give you credit for. Now, when you look at this drug addiction, it's like 17 points. Uh, I'll go back and, and, and rectify that so that way you'll have a 100 there. Uh, as we go on further down, you'll find that uh, we won't have to worry about anything in the course two section. Uh, so from the notification all the way up to the getting started pages, which you should be uh, looking at uh, with some form of importance. And just remember, I recommended everybody look at what I have on the getting started page because I provided you with so much information to help you be successful. If there's no question, I'm going to go ahead and end that. So if you do have a question, you can email it to me and I can respond to you. Thank you.